Because women in science have the power to change the world. Discover Women in Science, presented by the L'Oreal Foundation. Are we on the verge of another digital revolution after the one that shook up mainstream computing and for 50 years allowed computers to boost their power and performance day after day? That's the view of one of the greatest physicists on the planet, Michelle Simmons, a 50-year-old Londoner nicknamed the Quantum Queen. In Sydney, Australia, heading a team of 170 top researchers, she set herself an incredible challenge to build the first marketable quantum computer. I think it's, um, it is funny now because people call the race to build a quantum computer and the space race of the computing industry. And, you know, in some ways, being an astronaut is the same thing. It's going outside of the world, it's going big. Um, going quantum is going down and small. And the more we plunge into the world of the infinitely small, the further we stray from the laws of classical physics. Here, the behavior of atoms and particles is governed by quantum physics, a major 20th century discovery now at the heart of technological revolution. The quantum computer, behind this esoteric name, hides the machine of the future. A computer that operates in a radically different manner from current machines. Hard for the layman to grasp, but a fantastic source of excitement for scientists the world over. Just when conventional computers are running out of steam, the miniaturization of microprocessors has reached its limits. To face the challenges of tomorrow, such as the exponential multiplication of data and the proliferation of connected objects, we need computers that are infinitely more efficient. The quantum computer would seem to be one solution. So quantum computers are great because they work fundamentally differently and they really work for large data sets or where there's lots of variables. Quantum computer can look at all the variables at the same time in the quantum world and that gives you this exponential speed up. So some calculations initially that would take thousands of years can be done real time. But from theory to practice, there were still years of experiments. Some scientists are skeptical about the promises of quantum computing because making this type of computer reliable and efficient is a very complicated task. The infinitely small is unstable and therefore difficult to manipulate. The first work on quantum computers began in the 1990s, and in 1999, a small group of Australian researchers from the University of New South Wales discovered that silicon, a material that's cheap, easy to work with, and used to make most computer chips, might suit the construction of a quantum computer. This was a revolution, as until then, physicists were betting on rarer, more expensive materials like cesium or diamond. At the time, Michelle Simmons was already a quantum physics researcher at Cambridge University's Cavendish Laboratory. She saw the Australian discovery as fundamental and decided to join these Antipodean pioneers. And a lot of people like, don't understand why going to Australia would be the option that I'd choose. But, but at that time, one of the things I loved about Australia was the fact that it offered academic freedom. And so from a very early age, it offered the possibility to become a leader in your field. Before seeing how Michelle Simmons steered Australia into pole position in the quantum race against US giants Google, Intel, Microsoft, and IBM, we must revisit her childhood to understand how this young English girl, daughter of a high-ranking policeman, got the tenacity and the audacity that make her one of the most brilliant scientists in the world. It all began aged eight, when a memorable game of chess triggered something in the childhood of this little girl who was still unsure of herself. She regularly observed her father take on her brother until the day when she had the nerve to challenge her father, having hardly ever played before. The look on his face was a little bit horrified and a bit dismissive, so it was rather funny. And um, I guess that, that actually did have quite an impact on my life, the way he responded. Um, but he played me. But actually, after about 20 minutes, I checkmated him. And he was completely shocked. <laughs> he, for me, it was significant because, it, you know, having somebody that close to you not expecting things from you, um, at an early age, I remember thinking, gosh. It was a revelation. Michelle was capable of doing better than men. This would be confirmed age 12 when she was one student among many at Eltham Green School in London. Her physics teacher recognized her extraordinary abilities in physics, at the time a discipline almost exclusively reserved for boys. 
my physics teacher, his name's Jim Clark, um, and he, he was terrific. He saw that I loved physics and he would always encourage me to speak out loud, which was something I didn't particularly like doing, and to talk about my ideas in the classroom, which I'd always kept very quiet before. In her new Australian life in Sydney, the mother of three eats, sleeps and breathes quantum physics round the clock. Finding the solution to developing the computer of her dreams has become an obsession. Her day begins at 4 a.m. in a cafe a stone's throw from her lab, a taste of real life before diving into the mysteries of quantum. It's, it's nice to you know, be in an environment where you can get a bit of peace, you can get away from things and you can think quite clearly. And I love the kind of background noise, people coming and going. This is the most significant part of my day in some ways, because this is where I really get to think. Um, it's where I really get to plan things. As the head of the Quantum Computing Center, Michelle manages 170 high-level researchers with five working instruments like this one. A $1.5 million machine, a spectacular scanning tunneling microscope specifically adapted to the team's research. As a blind person's fingers scan Braille, the machine is capable of detecting the contours of individual atoms, observing them but also manipulating them. By placing a single atom of phosphorus on a bed of silicon, Michelle was the first in the world to make a single atom transistor, a major invention that inscribed her name in the book of records. One atom's great, but to make a computer, you eventually need many hundreds to thousands of atoms. And so our challenge now is we want to get lots of atoms together, and they're very small particles, but ultimately we've got to address each one individually. So we've got to find ways to get electrodes in to address each individual atom so we can put information in do the, the coding and then read the information out. So that's our challenge. How many can we get together and keep the whole thing in the quantum regime? Michelle Simmons also succeeded in creating from this transistor a qubit, the base unit of a quantum computer. Unlike the bits of conventional computers which work with binary data, zeros and ones, the qubit can have several values, which multiplies its computing capacity. With 300 qubits, for example, the computer can carry out 2,300 calculations simultaneously. But Michelle isn't there yet. And we're now on a race to try and get our first integrated circuit. We're calling it the quantum integrated circuit. And we're giving it 10 qubits in five years. That's our, that's our goal. And that really brings together 10 atoms, all fully connected so we can input, read out information, and run some kind of calculation to show that it's all quantum coherent. Working with Michelle can be challenging at times, but I'm always amazed uh, that she gets uh, things done and the, the things that she achieves. I think she's a great scientist and a an, uh, very inspiring leader. Outside the lab, Michelle has a passion for basketball that she shares with Thomas, her husband since her university years. It's a way of letting off steam after a stressful day devoted to fundamental research. Thomas, also a scientist, admires his wife's work. Always get it wrong. She's um, completely full on. She's one of those people who is always present. She gives everything she has to everything she does. So, um, you know, she's switched on 100%, fully committed, and, uh, and you've, you know, you, you know you, she's someone with whom you always have your hands full. The stakes are high, it must be said. The quantum computer could change the face of the world in unsuspected ways. There's many benefits of having a quantum computer. Airlines flying f uh, aircraft all around the world would minimize their fuel costs, and obviously the damage to the environment would be an example. But also, um, looking at drug design, if you could actually start to get computers working much more efficiently in how to design the drugs, they could actually target it for the human beings and actually make people uh, better much faster. Google's investing in quantum computing because they want to look at their self-driving cars and trying to look at all the data they're getting. And so getting machines to learn from large amounts of data um, to get to the point where they can predict things is another area where quantum computing will come in. Given the stakes, it's no wonder that there is fierce competition from the new technology giants to snatch the grail. From Google to IBM, Intel, Microsoft, and Canadian company D-Wave, the self-styled world's first quantum computing company, whose boasts of marketing a quantum computer are fueling debate among the scientific community. Michelle, meanwhile, fully intends to lead the field with this innovation, the use of silicon. Commercial quantum computers, I think, will start to come out over the next decade. There is actually already a company that sells one um, from 2010. 
Um, it cost $10 million to, to buy one, um, but they made it out of a different material. So what we're hoping is that the silicon is going to be a more stable computer that will last longer and scale to bigger sizes. And so our goal is really to try and build a commercial quantum computer as fast as we can, and certainly I would like to see that in my lifetime. To do this, Michelle has swapped her researcher's smock for a lobbyist suit and is urging the Australian authorities and captains of industry to finance her research and protect the intellectual property of her work. The Australian government saw the wisdom in this and in 2015 allocated a huge grant. Such research is strategic, for if the computer of the future is developed in Australia, they hit the jackpot. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull is personally following the work's progress. She is an inspiration here in Sydney at the University of New South Wales at the very forefront of global research. The government is supporting it strongly with a $25 million grant through our National Innovation and Science Agenda, and we will continue to do so. This is work of vital importance to Australia, the world, and our future. Hence, British-born Michelle receives honours reserved for Australia's leading lights, like this day in early 2017, when she was invited to make a speech to mark the national holiday. She took this opportunity to promote her research. There are few people in the world who truly have the capacity to understand what our future looks like, what it might look like, and what the new wave of technology has in store for us. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to formally make welcome Professor Michelle Simmons and ask her to deliver the 2017 Australia Day Address. Wow, what an introduction. <laughs> no pressure. Quantum physics is hard. Technology at the forefront of human endeavor is hard, but that is what makes it worthwhile. I strongly believe that the things that are most worthwhile in life are those that are very hard to do. For me, it was better to do the things that have the greatest reward, things that are hard, not easy, and things that will continue to challenge you throughout your life. Women in Science was presented by the L'Oreal Foundation.